Okay, I wanted to do a video about the troubleshooting that I did on my Live Z, um, which it turned out to be, that started from a conversation about a piece that I printed, this gear bearing right here. Um, what happened was I bought the printer, the first day I had the printer, I started printing the PLA parts that were on the SD card that came with the printer. At that time, um, I had already ordered some PETG filament from Amazon. And I wanted to experiment with PETG because I had read about uh, a lot of the properties of the two different plastics. And I was concerned that the PLA wouldn't hold up very well um, in hot environments. And one of the big target uh, uh, for, for 3D printing for me is to print parts for my RV that's going to be in the hot sun all summer uh, during the week and nobody's going to be there and it's going to get you know 80 90 degrees easily um, during the week so I was a little concerned about PLA from what I had read now I don't know if that's a really valid concern maybe it'd be fine it probably depends on a lot of different variables but I had heard that this PTG was ABS like with PLA printability and everybody's talking about it so I thought I probably want to learn how to print with it so I bought some PETG. Uh, also, some of the parts that I've wanted to print, and certainly some of the parts that you may have seen me print, um, are mechanical in nature, and they're, they're they you know gears and and uh, clamps and things like that, which also are supposedly better with PETG. So that was why I have so much PETG. At the day that I had a printer, I had one spool of PLA. It was a PLA that came with the printer, and that's this silver. And I printed this gear bearing because it was one of the prints that is on there. And many people noticed when I put it on the video that my live Z was way too high. And you can see that on this bottom layer. And, and I made a comment about that on my first video, uh, my video about my first Prusa prints. And I commented that because my live Z was so high, I was unable to print the castle that was on the SD card. And I had to lower my live Z in order to do that. And, and I lowered it um, I can't remember right now what it, what I ended up lowering it to, but it was uh, probably around 600 or so. And I ended up printing on it at, at around negative 600 for quite a while. And I got a lot of really good prints, but at one point I tried to print this gear bearing in a different color. Uh, again, this was on the second or third day that I had to print her. I didn't have any other filament, so I, I had to print it in PTG to get a different color. And so I sliced it in uh, Prusa Control. I noticed when I printed the gray one, the silver one, with the Prusa G code that it had 0% infill. So I would have chosen, and I don't remember exactly what I did, but I, I, I kind of remember the logic that I followed, and, and I would have chosen the 0.15 millimeter because the gray, the silver one was 1.5 millimeter. And I would have chosen 0% infill because I noticed that had 0% infill, and I was trying to get as close to that as possible. Um, it printed, it worked. And I eventually was able to make it move, but it's very difficult to move. And I made a comment about that on another video. And uh, when I did, somebody pointed out, hey, you know, you could uh, check this thing called extrusion multiplier. So I checked that, that turned out to be okay. Um, I decided what I would do is just reprint it again, but this time do it in Prusa's version of Slice 3R and pay a little more attention to the settings and so I chose the 0.2 micrometer, uh, 0.2 millimeter, oh, I say that wrong, 0.2 millimeter preset, speed preset. I used 0% infill and I hit, you know, slice and G code. And, uh, and I printed this out and it works. I was able to get it loose, um, but the bottom layer was completely fused. So, so again, my Z axis was too low for PETG. So I had set it for PLA and I'd been printing with PETG and I'd been getting away with it, but I had a lot of parts that had a lot that that either fit together and a lot of times it would be hard to get them to fit together it'd be hard to get a pin inside of a hole that would hold something that would move or whatever and it's because these bottom layers were too big there was a little bit of an overhang like it would print you know where, where the wall is supposed to be but there'd be an overhang and, and you know through a bunch of cutting with a knife and some sanding on this i was eventually able to get this one to work pretty good but nowhere near as good as the pla ones so at that point um, I knew I had to go a little bit deeper. And so what I decided to do was reprint one more time in PLA 
the Perusa Parvata G code. And I did that, and you can see the bottom layer here much lower than the first one that I printed the first day. You can certainly see that. But again, I'm having some bed adhesion problems here. You can see that as well. The, the bottom layer is kind of mottled there. And that's because, uh, well, the bed wasn't clean. I, I saw that and, in in, in, you know, I was taking some videos while I did that. And I'm not going to share those videos because it turned out they were really long and boring. And, you know, they were disjointed and I'm going in different directions and trying to figure out what's going on. So uh, I'm not really anything to share there, but it, but it helped me to document what I was doing. And, I, and I, you know, I, I can tell you the bed was not clean and some other issues there. And, I, and you can see some lifting there here in the corner. But, but this came out great. It works great. And I was paying really close attention to how the toolpath, the, 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 the extruder moved and stuff while, while it was printing it. And it wasn't just the Z layer. <laughs> and so that's what got me to load the 2G code. So I took the G code that I used to print. I have to look at the bottom of this one that day so that I didn't slice 3R. And it's a G code that I got from the printer on the SD card. And I put them both into a G code viewer in a web browser and compared it to as I'm moving up through the layers. And that was when the light bulb really went off. At that point, I know, I knew there was a setting. Uh, I, I noticed there was a giant difference in the way that it printed around these walls as it went around this gear. And uh, it took me a few experimental uh, slices to figure out what setting it was, just turning things on and off and reslicing and comparing it in the G, G code viewer, but it wasn't too hard. Because once I saw the setting, I thought that's probably it. It's called Ensure Vertical Wall, the ver Vertical Shell Thickness. Ensure Vertical Shell Thickness. And what it does is it causes extra infill to be printed. Um, even if you have 0% infill near these walls, especially if they're tapered. And all of these walls on this inside of the gear are tapered. And what it caused this to do is this is printing these each of these layers of this gear instead of just going around the outline of the gear it's just doing a bunch of tiny little movements <laughs> and and so it's you know it's causing a little over extrusion a little bit of extra materials coming out because it's ptg and, and, and it's a little leaky right and so i turned that off and sliced again with ptg and i got a g code that when i compare it to the original prusa g code and and i look at them in the side by side in the browser with the g code you know preview uh, yeah, they look a lot similar. The, the tool paths look much, much more similar. They're, they're not identical, of course, but they're much, much more similar, almost identical. And guess what? I printed this out. It just Again, I, at that point, I hadn't really figured out my Live Z, so I still had, you know, I don't know if there's a little piece of plastic that's about to come off. I still had some extra plastic here on the bottom layer. But, uh, you know, once I got rid of that and it was very easy to do, I just, you know, was able to literally just peel, peel some of it off and it... And it, and it just runs great. It runs just as good, if not better, than any of my PLM. So that was what it was for this gear. And I learned two things. You know, for some of the parts that you need some extra tolerance, you got to be careful that ensure vertical wall, the vertical shell thickness, although it does come in handy also, um, especially if you're using low infill uh, and you want that top, you know, when you're printing that top layer, then, you know, you've got that extra little bit around those thin walls for the top layer to grip onto and if you don't have that I've had some issues um, you know where the top layer didn't make it all the way to the end and it and, and it, you know it, it only stops at the last piece of infill so if you're using something like 10% infill on a big part um, that could be a problem so um, you know it's, a, it's not a terrible setting to use it, it's just in certain parts you got to turn it off and, and that's what I'm learning you really got to pay attention to your slicer settings when you're making especially parts that are, that are special like this that are going to move or something um, you know, go in there and experiment with them because it, just because it didn't work with one, uh, you know, the way you normally would, would print, uh, try other settings that you maybe never even tried before because that might be what's going on. Uh, and, and that G code uh, preview was really helpful. So anyway, thanks for everybody who made the comments uh, that helped me figure this out. I really appreciate it. I probably wouldn't have figured it out as quickly as I did without the comments. I really want to thank everybody who watches my videos. I especially want to thank those people who have subscribed. Uh, if you like my videos, hit the thumbs up button. If you uh, want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it. I keep track of that. If you make comments, um, I'll try to reply to them um, if I can. And uh, I do appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching. And uh, hopefully uh, I'll make some more videos for you guys to watch. Thank you very much.